All right, let's see if she runs any better. Better, still not right. I don't think we have a clutch. this job I don't know today is the day that this truck drives out of its grave this is what you guys have been waiting for and it's finally here we're gonna start off by airing up the tires and then see you one last time if we can get that clutch freed up and then explain a couple other things that we discovered and freaking bring this thing back to life hopefully drive it out of here see if it's leaking I don't think it is I think it's actually taking air alright that's good Luke Give her a kick. Boom! That's <laughs> <laughs> kind of what I would expect to happen. Yeah, we really only have a few more things to do. Um, we obviously, to... might try and make the clutch work, but um, you know, mice, some mice lived in there for a while, and all their bedding and their nest is kind of packed into the clutch pack down there, so you really can't move it around. Plus, with them living in there, it, there's a lot of moisture and everything rusted up pretty good where normally you wouldn't have that. So we'll try and dig some of that out today and see if we can get a working clutch. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping. So, you know, I've been, I've been gone here, but basically, you know, you work things over, rewired some stuff. Um, some idiot set the point gap not quite right, this guy. <laughs> so well, um, in hopes that I have more dwell, I had it too close together and it was, um, jumping the gap instead of going through the plug wire so uh and that wasn't entirely our problem too we have discovered while we were working on it here when the camera was dead the other day that the ignition or the timing chain is junk yeah completely. we can turn that crank a good what 20 degrees before the yeah, distributor even, moves either direction at all even more than that and basically what you have going on there is uh it just creates a situation where you have late valve timing so um, and we'll, that's we'll, why that's why we need so much fuel to run is it's not it's the piston or the valve's not open the whole time the piston's going down so it doesn't have the proper vacuum signal yeah really your valve events aren't at the right time so, so it's you're just bleeding filling out. the intake full of fuel and then it's able to run that's kind of our band-aid yeah we we uh it'll idle with the choke on so but basically with late valve timing um again your valves aren't opening and closing at the right time so you're bleeding off a lot of compression um and that's why we had super low manifold vacuum, which we'll show that again today, just how low that was, which creates a whole host of problems with tuning where you're getting into your power valve and a whole bunch of other stuff. So a quick test you can do to determine uh, the wear of your timing chain, which you can do on any engine, is you can turn the crank and if it takes you, um, you know, some amount of rotation here until your distributor starts, your rotor starts to turn on your distributor, um, you know, that's just kind of about how much play you have in your timing chain, and it's a good representation of how much wear you have. Now, if you just install a timing chain, if you were to do this on a fresh chain, as soon as I turn this crank, um, my rotor would turn because my valve train is connected to my crank uh, by that timing chain. So the amount of movement we have here uh, before our rotor turns is the amount of play that's in that chain again. So um, on this engine, it's pretty extreme. We can get quite a bit of rotation in there before that rotor wants to move so we go all the way and then it just starts to think about um, rotating there so uh, this timing chain is pretty worn out and again um, that might be the worst one i've ever actually seen and it could have even you know jumped a tooth at this point so, so yeah i think that's definitely <laughs> our idling issue Oh yeah, definitely our idling and our tuning issue. I think our carburation was, set I was right. moving that distributor all over and nothing was happening. Yeah, it's, it's pretty darn near impossible to set ignition timing when it's off, let alone when it's this bad. So, yeah, everything gets parked for a reason, I guess. And with how this would run um, in that scenario, it just there's no way it would have ran right. 
and I'm sure you know that's why Ron he ended up parking the thing. Something to do with that. That's pretty aggressive, and there's there's just no way it would have ran right. All right, so I'm gonna work on a fuel system while you mess around with the clutch a little bit, and then we'll see where we can go from there. Yeah, it should be fun. It rained all last night. Oh, it, it poured a torrential yesterday. Torrential downpour, so, so everything's nice and muddy. All the oil that was dry on the engine is now not so much dry, and you get kind of covered with it. So. All right, so Luke's still down there plugging away at the clutch, trying to get some of that crap out of there, see if we can get it freed up. I've gone ahead and with my masterful zip tie skills, secured a gas tank in there and then secure the hose even into the gas tank. So we have a fuel system. We have a coolant system that surprisingly, even through the whole weekend now, has held water. It didn't leak. The duct tape worked. We have a charging system and we have a battery. Use the piece of wire that was on here originally to hold down this side. And once again, good old classic zip ties down this side and that's not going too far <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's not going anywhere because I could be wrong all right so what we got going on here is basically um, I think our old throwout bearing is good and seized onto the shaft of the tranny we got this ratchet strap on here and I've tried just about everything and um, it's pretty rusted up where it's not gonna move so maybe as we move it around uh, move the vehicle around Maybe it'll free up, but basically um, there's a shaft on the tranny that's going to go through uh, this hole in the throwout bearing and it's completely seized onto it where it won't slide back and forth whatsoever, even with all this tension and putting the clutch pedal on it and everything. So I don't think we're going to have a clutch, at least initially. Um, I've done everything within my power here, so that's pretty much that. This is it. This is the moment. This truck drives out of its grave. You ready? Do you ever think that we're stupid? All the time. Alright. <laughs> Reverse me out of the hole. More. Are, are you ready? We're gonna go for it. Two pumps. Choke. Go. You got the choke on? Yep. Open. <laughs> Ow. Oh, I grabbed the glass in the back. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so it kind of ran out of its hole. More of a depressing yep. roll, and then we got locked inside. Do you have carb cleaner? Yeah. Let's push it all the way back. I'm going to take that air breather off because it seems to affect it when we put it on. Yo. There is also the option of jacking it up and then dropping the jack and burning out. I like that better. All right, so roll starting it was not really working. So we're gonna do something even more dangerous and stupid, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 
You want to reveal to the populace what exactly we're going to do? All right, so roll starting it does not work. It's, the engine's just not strong enough for the bad timing chain to really fire off. And we got to go uphill, so and that doesn't really work. Yeah. So what we're going to do, much better idea. Clearly safer. Yes. I've gone ahead and ripped the back piece out here so that I can climb in without gouging my hand open any more than it already is. What I'm going to do is Luke's going to fire it up, get the tires spinning, and we're going to drop it on the ground. <laughs> and then I'm going to jump in and probably die or maybe just run after him and follow him. I don't know. Yeah, well, we're just going to make it up as we go. I'll see how fast you go. If it's too fast, I'm just going to walk out behind you. Yeah, let's hope I can get it nice and slowed down. We'll see. All right, contact. All right, ready? Let's go. Give me a count from five. Three, two, one, go. Ah! All right, round two, fire it up. First gear, hold it, decent throttle. I'm feeling really good about the gas being right in front of me. You're fine. That's ah, fine, kind of. Okay, here we go. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, drop! Yeah! I'm in, go for it!
cool. Now I gotta walk that far. Today on Junkyard Digs, we go for a run after a truck that left me behind. sketchy but it did it I just sprinted like quarter mile dude hey the heater core is leaking is it oh yeah I feel like I end up climbing out of windows a lot. you know the doors work oh what fun is that <laughs> a lot more <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm inhaling cancer right now. I cracked a few jokes about you running. I ran a long ways <laughs> at a full sprint. Oh. That was like quarter mile. Imagine what you could do if you actually had a clutch, decent tires, and uh, if we had a windows, had clutch, and brakes, we'd drive this into town. 26 years. This sat abandoned for 26 years. And we drove it out of its grave. Yeah, no and kidding. down there, we put a mile on it. With junk. We didn't, we really didn't do anything but throw some battery cables on it. We probably didn't even need plugs and wires, but it just. Well, seemed, we really didn't. It was the, the dwell was off. Yeah, it just seemed like the thing to do. But I mean, you had a timing chain in this thing, a clutch in this thing, and worked the brakes over, and you could have drove her into town. But Yeah, literally. Yeah. 26 years. Seems like it's got plenty of power if you tow into it yet. So imagine if the engine was all up to snuff. Oh my god, it'd be amazing. Yeah. And it's pretty solid, honestly. It's the whole reason I bought it. So if anyone wants to buy a truck, there you go. I mean, most people probably would have just trailered it home, but. Which is what we're gonna do. But we couldn't just leave it there. No, I mean, we. I mean. Why wouldn't you just do what we did? Yeah, that was awesome. We spent three days. Really only needed two. We really didn't even spend two full days. Maybe no. like six hours total. Hey, it was awesome. Hey, <sighs> we survived. <laughs> we did it. Not the smartest thing we've ever done, but how many people say I did that? Not the smartest, but one of the coolest. I enjoyed it. That was awesome. What else am I gonna do with my time? What time? <laughs> You're not wrong, what time? Well, I'm going home. See ya. Yeah, I'll see you around, man. I'm going to go sleep in my uh, little kid's house. Yeah. I mean, you want to stay in the guest room? Eh, well, maybe. I don't know. How big is it? How many beds? Well, I usually keep my pet raccoon in there, but I can move him out. You think so? Yeah. Well, we'll be seeing you. Okay, I'll see you around, man. I'm just going to get in my truck and drive home. All right. There it is. We actually did it. We succeeded entirely at driving this thing out of its grave. And it was completely safe. It was, com yeah, that. <laughs> this thing sat for 26 years. Windows busted out, hood open on an abandoned farm here in rural Iowa, middle of nowhere. There's a cornfield right there. If you guys have any barn finds in your area, I suggest you do the same, because this was a lot of fun. Yeah, and, yeah, like really it only took us both together six hours to do the thing, so. Yeah, it took a couple six hour days and we were good to go. <clears throat> the old carbureted stuff, super simple. You know, you turn a few wrenches and you mean drive down the road. Bless so. the fail. It's just that easy. Make sure you follow Junkyard Digs on Instagram and YouTube. Subscribe here, like his channel, Thunderhead289, link in the description. It's going to be a lot more stuff like this coming out soon. 
got a Datsun, got a Fiat, stuff's been sitting for 10, 30 years. You got a lot of resurrection stuff. A lot of resurrection up. stuff, and a lot of cool stuff. The F100 even gets finished here, believe it or not. You just need to get your videos made. Yeah, I just gotta get videos made. I'm heading overseas here in a little bit for a year. It's gonna be a little bit dry spell right at the end. I'll try to space them out for you guys. Make sure you subscribe below. Check out his channel, like I mentioned. Follow me on Instagram. Whatever you gotta do, make sure you get it done. I will see you guys next time on Junkyard Digs. Peace.